guys, welcome back to Crash Test Mummy. I've decided that this is gonna go into this category because the whole point of the Crash Test Mummy series is that I'm testing out weird and wonderful things that you don't have to. Some of this stuff might be weird, some of it might be wonderful, some of it you may wanna test out for yourselves, um, but I have pretty much trialed every hair removal technique from top to toe, and that's what I'm gonna talk about in today's video. Also aptly named, because I am a bit of a car crash today, all kinds of chip nail polish, no makeup, hairy legs, I don't know what's going on up here, and I've got the most hair on my chin I've ever had in my entire life, and that is for you. I hope you appreciate this sacrifice, because I usually would not leave the house without tending to this, and I've been leaving it for a few days just to really show you what I've got going on, what I'm having to work with, because when I've filmed these videos in the past and talked about this in the past, I'm pretty sure that people think that it's not really that big a deal, and I mean, you know, fair enough, it's gonna be worse for some people, but. I think that people assume that I'm talking about, you know, a little bit of hair. This, in my opinion, is substantial. It's something that I had probably expected to happen later, and I now fear for my 78-year-old self, because I feel like I'm going to be full Wolverine by that point, because this started when I was about, I'd say, mid-20s, I'd had one or two hairs. I swear to God, on my 30th birthday, I woke up half a beard, so what's gonna happen in the future, who knows? But I just kind of, I will zoom you in at some point. Um, so that's kind of how I'm feeling right now. And very excited to film this video so I can kind of defuzz myself. Um, although to be fair, not shaving my legs isn't your fault, it's laziness. We're gonna start from the very, very top, which is, well, my hair, but I don't remove that and I haven't had it cut for a while, so my eyebrows. I have had my eyebrows microbladed twice and probably do a top up now. The reason I've had that done is because my eyebrows are very, very sparse from the over plucking 90s um, that lots of people suffered through. So I don't have to do very much to them. I have found that in the hot weather, is anybody else feeling this? In the hot weather, my eyebrows grow back quicker. Like I can go months and months and barely notice anything. I'm sure I could be, you know, more diligent, but barely, barely ever am I like, oh, I really must tweeze my eyebrows. And the other day I thought, wow. And I think it's the hot weather. And I kind of feel that way with my any other facial hair as well. Um, but I barely do anything. The only service that I would say that I would recommend because I've really enjoyed it in the past is the Benefit Brow Service. I can't remember what it's called, but when they tint and wax, that was a great definition that they gave me pre-microblading. So if you're kind of not quite there yet, or you've got more brows than I had, um, that might be a great thing. I know that various places will do it. I'm just kind of giving that as a benchmark because I know that they're across the country. Um, and I really, really liked that service. But if you are a bit of a perfectionist, I would always say do them yourself, don't leave anything in, in the hands of anybody else. If you are going to be like really staring at them and wanting them perfect, it's probably safest to just kind of not let anybody else touch them. Moving down the face, moustache. This isn't a major issue for me, um, dark hair wise. I have maybe like two or three very dark hairs that come through um, that need to be plucked, they're kind of like wiry. But other than that, it's just kind of fluff. And the only reason that it irritates me is because when I'm taking pictures, if it was just, you know, if I was just a regular person in a regular office job, um, which I am two days a week, but if that was my only gig, I probably wouldn't ever care about it. However, because I do take up close pictures of my face from time to time, I'm very mindful of this. It kind of suddenly, in certain lights, don't love it. And so, I have waxed it. Don't get along with waxing at all. It breaks my skin out horribly. So, where has it gone, where has it gone? This thing I purchased, I think it was a Korean beauty shop I went to in Newcastle, it was a face mask shop, it might even be called The Mask Shop. Um, I think it's supposed to be a flamingo. What do we think? I will link below versions of this because you can, it's just like a, a beauty razor, I can't remember what they're called, but there's loads of versions of this that you can get. I used to use a regular razor. I used disposable razors for everything else and I just thought, what's the difference? I'm not sure there is a major difference, to be honest, but I bought this because I thought it was the right thing to do. Um, and so this, it does make it a little bit easier when I'm doing the rest of my face, which we'll get to in a second, but I do just kind of quickly go over and just defluff it. Weirdly, my top lip is the only place that when I remove the hair, it goes numb. It's so bizarre. The only thing I can equate it to is when I take off my nail polish, because I have nail polish on all the time. When I take off my nail polish, my nails hurt, and I've read that that is because they are um, sensitive to the air. And the only thing I can think is, I've got so much hair on my top lip that when I remove it, the skin is sensitive to the air. That is my 
theory. I would love for one of you to tell me that I'm wrong and give me the real answer, but that is my theory. So that's what I do. I don't find that um, the hair grows back any thicker. We'll get to that too. Um, I don't have any kind of rashes, no problems whatsoever. The only thing is once I've done it, don't do any kind of skincare afterwards. So I don't do um, like even moisturise, nothing. If I do it in the evening, then I'll, I'll forgo any kind of moisturiser afterwards. There is a spray that I will use if I feel like it, but I can kind of go without. Or if I do it in the morning, then by that evening, I'm probably safe to put on my regular skincare, but just give it a good amount of time where you're not messing with it. I once had um, a full face threading, which, oh my God, never do that. Even if you don't think you have that much facial hair, which I did not think that I had that much hair like around other areas, full face, it felt like they were ripping my face off. And then in the same establishment, I had already booked to have a facial and they decided to do it that way around. Hair removal, facial. What a terrible idea that was. I looked like I was suffering with major acne. It was insane, all over my face. I would not go back to threading for that reason, but also I now always have it in my mind that I cannot put anything on my face after any kind of hair removal. A bit different with shaving than with um, kind of plucking the hair out, but still can't be too careful. So recently I have actually been using this to do my whole face and I started doing this just as a bit of an experiment because I was going to do a video about it originally uh, and I wanted to see what it was really like and I was fairly convinced having um, tried, have I done this in the past? I think I did it all at once actually. I think I was just out on a limb and hoping for the best now I'm, now I'm saying it. Um, but now having done it I can tell you that when I remove the hair that really is just fluff, like I get a decent amount of hair around my jaw. I think I shaved it about a week ago, so it's not so bad right now, I can't kind of show you, but a decent amount, I would say. Um, but it's not something that you would notice unless you're looking for it or like, I don't know, it's just not really ever an issue until you start using certain foundations that cling to the hair and it starts to kind of have an awkward effect and I think that a lot of people suffer with that you know the whole hide mark that people get I think a lot of that is because it's kind of clung to that hair around your jaw that you forget that you've got so I remove all of the hair now occasionally not all the time probably once a month maximum um just around the jaw all the way over the top lip and on the chin and I'll go kind of down there as well you know the full treatment having done this for some amount of time now I can tell you that any hair that is just that dew kind of slight fluff uh, does just come back the same way and any hair that is stubbly and dark comes back stubbly and dark it doesn't change the way that the hair comes back it might seem slightly coarser although to be honest when I feel this area it's never ever ever stubbly so if you've just got kind of soft hair I just don't think it's going to be an issue if you are shaving your face or any area of your body and the hair is feeling coarse it was coarser it was thicker anyway don't worry quite so much about it. Like when you shave the hairs on your arms, they're much, they're a completely different kind of hair than the hair on your face. So yeah, okay, it might be a little bit stubblier, but as it grows out, it kind of tapers towards the end. We've all heard it, haven't we? But I'm trying to say, if, you've ju if you're just getting rid of that kind of, I want to say dew, is that what it's called? I feel like that's a baby term. But anyway, the fluff that we've all got all over our faces, if you remove that, don't worry about it growing back in any different way, it won't. In fact, this takes ages to grow back, ages and ages, which is probably why I hardly ever do it. Um, whereas the, I would say probably similar with the hair on my top lip, apart from the occasional coarse one that comes around, around here, and then the hairs on my chin, totally different story. The hairs on my chin, let me bring you in. I get really quite coarse, dark hairs in patches around my chin here. Now, if I shave those, they will come back like this. Instantly, the next day, they will look like black dots on my chin. So it's not ideal. I would not say that if this is the kind of hair that you've got, that shaving is necessarily a solution. But it kind of is if you use it as part of a solution. So basically, what I do is I will shave it today, let's say, and then I'd shave it again next week, and then I'd shave it again the week after. And approximately three to four days later, all of the hair that could possibly come through on my chin, all of the black stubbly hair is available for me to pluck out. And I can pluck it all out and it's kind of like waxing, which does not work on my chin. For some reason, wax will not 
pick up any of the hairs on my chin. It's driving me insane, but it just will not work. I've waxed pretty much everywhere else on my body and it works. Um, and these hairs just do not want to be grabbed by wax. So it doesn't work. This is my alternative. So I try to get everything on the same cycle and then I pluck it all out. And that's the longest lasting way of doing this. I couldn't possibly shave it every single day. My skin would become coarse. I did try that for a little while and it kind of, you know how um, men's skin has just got a different texture to it, especially when they shave. It, it kind of was becoming like that. It was like a slightly rougher texture and I can only imagine it's because my skin is trying to um, protect itself against what I'm doing to it all the time. So I wouldn't say that that's a solution if you do have these black coarse hairs. However, you can use it as a way of trying to pluck everything out all at once and um, getting a longer lasting, smoother result. That is what I do. I've also been using this. I've been using this on my bikini line for a while and it is very effective. It's called the Smooth Skin, I think. Um, okay, I think it's called Smooth Skin, Eye Pulse. This thing is fantastic. I've used it on my bikini line. Um, I don't know what all of the different bikini things are called, you know, like Brazilian, Hollywood, etc., etc. But you know, I, I get rid of a decent amount of hair and it really does stay gone. I was just away in Greece for a week and I didn't take anything to deal with that at all. I didn't have to worry about my bikini line the whole time I was away. I was wearing very high cut bikinis and um, swimwear and seriously, not even a problem at all. And never have I been more thankful of this thing. Um, I do have to use it fairly often. I would say um, probably once a week in the summertime when I'm really wanting to keep it up. Um, but once a week, I'm just zapping it. I'm not even shaving the area. And it's like super, super smooth, no bumps, no regrowth. It's just fantastic. I could talk all day about this and I may do um, if you guys want a more in depth video just about this thing, but I just, it's fantastic. And it works really well there. It doesn't work so well on my legs because um, my leg hair is not very dark and it needs a contrast. So it needs kind of paler skin, darker hair for it to actually work these IPL devices. But works really well on the bikini line. So I've been trying to work with it on my chin and it's I don't know whether or not it's really doing the same thing I'm going to persevere with it so whenever I shave I zap 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 because that's how it works you shave and then you use the IPL um, and I will keep you posted but I have been testing this out for my face I, I have I do think that with certain ones it's it's lessened them but I think a lot of the hair on my chin although it's coarse and stubbly it's not actually that dark so I don't know um, so that is the chin situation hopefully I covered everything that you wanted to know um, everywhere else is kind of shaving. So I just use regular disposable razors. What I do first always is exfoliate. Um, I have here one of my favourites of the moment, which is the Dr. Robux uh, two-in-one mask and scrub. This is fantastic. Really smells amazing. Tingles. It's like a minty freshness. Um, I put it on, leave it for probably five minutes, then scrub, scrub, scrub. Really, really nice. That's what I use on my face. On my body, I use the Scrub of Your Life from Soap and Glory. Anything that's really gritty, you could also use just a body brush. Just make sure that you exfoliate. Same with waxing. Exfoliation is key if you don't want ingrown hairs. I used to wax my bikini line all the time. Very, very effective. Um, in fact, I had no problem with waxing my bikini line at all. I got to the point where I was quite an expert at it. Uh, and the thing that put me off was I eventually graduated to the hot wax which is actually a better thing to use, although it's scary. Uh, it's like a tub of hot wax and it's molten. Make sure it's not too hot because you can burn your skin. But it is a little bit scary to consider and you don't use a strip, you just put it straight onto your skin, then it cools and you pull it off, it becomes the, the wax strip. Um, and I used it in a very sensitive area, possibly further in than I should have, and it, I just couldn't it off and then I was really scared because I thought I'm gonna have to go to A&E with a, a piece of cold wax stuck to me it's not cool and I was really quite scared and eventually I managed to kind of like cut around oh my god I still have nightmares about this and so I didn't wax for a while also I found that um, waxing could that the ingrown hair thing was a problem um, I could get kind of rashes afterwards it was okay but it wasn't the perfect solution and so now I found this thing this is amazing for that area. Um, waxing everywhere else, like I said, it just doesn't, for some reason, doesn't work for me. I can't leave my leg hair to grow long enough to wax, which is what I was kind of thinking of doing recently, which is why I'd left my legs and I just, I can't stand it. I'm gonna have to shave them today. Um, I just get really like, I feel, I don't feel unclean, but it irritates me to leave it for too long. Um, so waxing was kind of something that I only ever did in my bikini line and occasionally 
top lip and eyebrows when I was feeling like it but regardless of what hair removal technique you're using a scrub is going to be fantastic just to make sure that um, everything is as it should be now before I actually oh one thing I did want to mention this is a placeholder because I don't have the other one the oily I think it's called the, the salt scrub from Sanctuary the best scrub ever for shaving because it scrubs does that job and then it leaves just enough residue behind to actually use as like an oil to shave your legs it's amazing and then I get the smoothest smoothest shave ever it does make a mess of the bath which is why I don't use it so often and it's quite pricey this one I don't like as much this is the hot sugar scrub different thing completely um, but the salt scrub is really really nice if you're looking for something that does double duty after shaving moisturize as soon as you possibly can because that will give you I don't know what it is but it locks in the moisture, it helps keep your legs smoother for longer or whatever area it is that you are shaving. This is something that I really, really like. This is the Vaseline Intensive Care Cocoa Radiant with Pure Cocoa Butter. It's like an oil but a gel at the same time. Um, stretches really, really far, as in you don't need a lot of it. <laughs> I don't know how else to put that. Um, but I use it all over my body and it's perfect for after shaving my legs. Um, something that I would use for shaving my face is the Body Shop Chamomile Cleansing Butter. I cleanse with this, but if I was gonna cleanse, or if I was gonna shave, oh, stuck. If I was gonna shave kind of all around here, for example, I might put a little bit of this on just for some slip and then use it to, use my razor to remove the hair. Um, and something that I have used a bunch when I have had some kind of irritation on my face, my bikini line, anywhere, um, after waxing, shaving, any kind of hair removal is this. And this is the La Roche-Posay Cerazinc. I can't read this actually. Oh, I can. I was gonna say I bought it in Greece and it's gonna be in Greek, but it's not. Um, zinc, sulfate, <laughs> zinc sulfate solution, cleansing and soothing. This makes a lot of sense now because Sudocrem's got zinc in it, right? And that helps with breakouts and I cannot understand how. But whenever I've got any kind of breakouts, at the moment I've been getting breakouts around here that are really annoying, uh, it really, really helps. But it's been amazing in the past when I've had, um, like when I used to wax my bikini line, it would be very, very angry and red. Um, so I would spray this, give it, you know, I mean, it wasn't in the best position. I have to lock the door, you know, legs akimbo, watch some TV for a little bit while I wait for it to do its magic. But I'd say 20 to 30 minutes and it really did feel soothed um, and kind of better. So that's something to bear in mind as well. There are some things out there that will help you if you do kind of get like red, angry rashes after any hair removal. There are some great products on the market that will help with that, but some that you wouldn't even think were supposed to do that job. Before we wrap up, because I really have tried to make this snappy and I know I'm like talking a mile a minute and some people will not like that I'm talking so much, but there's only so many ways that you can put across a point without talking and there are very few. Epilating. This is my nemesis. I have epilated my bikini line, which because I found that um, waxing alone didn't get every single hair, I would either pluck, which is very tedious, or I would epilate. And so I would do all of the waxing that I possibly could. And then I would use one of these, which you can use in the bath. Hottest bath I could possibly stand. Preferably not immediately after waxing, that's not a good idea, but a couple of days later, and I would epilate. It really is not pleasant. And no matter what anybody says, I have never gotten used to the pain. Uh, but I did always use it on my bikini line. My legs, I just didn't ever feel like I'd got them completely smooth, so it was pointless. Where this was a game changer was on my face. And um, for a while, it was working really well. And now, every time I use it, it is horribly rashy. So if I used this now, kind of to do all of this area that I would wanna do, I would just come up with like a beard of rash. If you can get along with an epilator and you feel like you have a substantial amount of facial hair, it is amazing but it's not gonna be for everyone. I do think that anything that pulls hair out of my face kinda of just doesn't work for me. My skin doesn't react very well to that. Um, and so the other things that I've been using have been working a little bit better for me because plucking in specific areas is better than plucking my entire face, which is kind of what those people did when they did the full threading. Um, and threading, if you can do threading for yourself, good for you, I'm not even gonna try, because this is bad enough. Uh, but that is it, hopefully I have given you kind of a 101 answered some brief questions that you may have had on any kind of hair removal. Hopefully I haven't missed something major and just completely forgotten um, because very little planning goes into my videos as you know. But I just wanted to chat with you about things that I've used, 
thing like methods that I've tried and um, things that I think work. I would love for you guys to talk amongst yourselves and with me in the comments and kind of discuss things that you've tried because this is a family. We can be a community who are sharing um, information on stuff like this because people don't talk so much about facial hair specifically um, on YouTube and just in general. Not a lot of people kind of just want to chat about it at the office today uh, and yet lots of people are suffering with it. So please share your own personal expertise and what you have used and if you've got any suggestions, recommendations or requests for upcoming crash test mummy videos, couldn't say that then, uh, please leave those as well. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys later. Bye!